Oh goodness, imagine what has happened. We've had another mass shooting in the U.S. My goodness, can you possibly believe that? How does such a thing happen? Ah, oh, you know my favorite thing about these mass shootings, and when I say favorite, I actually mean the most deplorable, distressing, and disheartening thing I can think of, is the fact that every time they happen, we almost seem to automatically default turning into a political issue. Uh, as soon as we find out there's the corpses piled up and we have yet another tragedy of Pearl in the Pacific Northwest, we try to automatically find a way to blame our political opponents for it. You know, if you're a pro-gun guy, go on the Fox News website and watch their stuff. They're blaming jihadists, blaming atheists, blaming the gays. You go on Huffington Post, they're blaming the Tea Party and, and uh, people who are against Black Lives Matter calling people rednecks, you know, it's absolutely absurd. The absolute just baseless, uh, petty, and really just completely remorseless politicking and special interest groups, you know, baiting that goes on whenever these horrible things happen. And uh, you know what? That might just be one of the reasons why we keep having these mass shootings. Has that ever dawned on anyone that maybe the fact that you know we trivialize all these things? Uh, you know, we always talk about you know gun control and violent media and what else we got going on? Uh, the breakdown of the American family, and all these things going on. But you know, you never really talk about the mass shootings as being a actual existential problem. And I think more so than anything. That's probably what's going on. Uh, when you look at the people who commit mass shootings, you tend to kind of want to lump them in as people with uh, mental disorders. And you know what? To a certain extent, maybe there actually are quite a few of these guys that have uh, mental disorders. But deep down, I think it really becomes a matter of perspective. Uh, because the mental disorders did not go out and get a gun and go on this mass shooting spree. Uh, the shooters themselves made a conscience a uh, conscious decision. They uh, conscientiously went out there, formulated a plan, and decided to go out and kill people. For what reason? And something that I've learned, and this appears to be a, uh, another aggrieved young man with an uh, interest in the morbid, sensationalistic coverage of mass murder. I don't know if it's real or not, but we're already seeing footage of a... Um, the guy on 4chan who's claiming he's going to go on a shooting spree, which really kind of fits in tune with all the other guys. Uh, Adam Lanza was a huge fan of Shock Beyond Belief, which is the, the Columbine quote unquote fan site, which I really got to do a video about that and kind of expose what's going on there. But you know, these people, you look at mass shootings, you look at these mass killers, you know, they all have the exact same sort of MO. You know, they want to become famous. They want their otherwise uh, meaningless lives to have some sort of social significance. And, uh, you know, you can either go out and get a college degree and work really hard and become successful in a career field or become a humanitarian or start a nonprofit or do all these things and work your way up the rungs and actually make a little bit of a beneficial impact on society. But that takes time. That takes effort. And we really don't do a good job of promoting that. You know, if you go out and you open up a nonprofit, you feed homeless people, or you, you know, help out college students, or you do whatever good in your own community, nobody really cares. That's not going to get you national coverage. Now, if you pick up an AK-47 and you go to elementary school and blow away 40 kindergartners, people are going to talk about that. You're going to get some coverage. That will get you the Wikipedia page. Um, you know, open up a soup kitchen wall. So, the media, I've said this time and time again, they're at least halfway comfortable for what goes on. Because basically every time we have one of these mass shootings, and whether or not the suspect dies is completely irrelevant, that doesn't matter. What matters is they go from being absolute nobodies to being, you know, ineffaceable monuments of the American condition overnight. That's why they go on mass killings. That's why they keep happening over and over and over again because they're trying to make something out of their meaningless, worthless, stupid, pointless lives. Which is a shame because their lives don't have to be meaningless. I mean, there's a way I think early on we can kind of get some uh, prevention measures in there. We can go in there and kind of wean them off and get them, you know, to think, hey, 
maybe instead of saying that you can uh, make yourself famous or that you can become somewhat remarkable for doing something truly heinous and disgusting and deplorable, you know, if you actually, you know, step back and, you know, make a couple of sacrifices and do something good, maybe that will also give you some purpose. But the fact of the matter is, we're not really raised a generation with any sort of great moralistic, altruistic purpose. Uh, what is our society about today? It's about, you know, getting uh, social uh, network credit. It's about looking good in front of your friends. It's about getting followers. It's about having completely nameless, faceless people you don't know support you and think you're a big shot. Uh, these kids, they live in complete isolation. They're always online 24 hours a day. They don't have any real friends. Uh, they're kept locked up uh, with only just uh, all this incessant rhetoric on the internet is bombarding them 24 hours a day. And uh, over time, what happens is there's a continuum. And Dr. Wilner, uh, Michael Wilner, the forensic uh, panel, smartest dude ever said, he pretty much bluntly gave it to me when I interviewed him one time when he said, you know what, there's a continuum. There is a cycle and there's intervention points every way. It starts off with a, a man who is grieved, he has some sort of personal setback, and instead of, you know, owning up to it and moving on, he becomes absolutely obsessed with it. Uh, we're seeing that with Adam Lanza. We saw that with uh, uh, that one guy in California who uh, couldn't get laid, so went out and killed a whole bunch of people. We're seeing that with uh, James Holmes. And pretty much all of them have that. Uh, they think some wrongdoing has happened to them. They don't consider their act of violence to be an injustice. They think that whatever petty, insignificant, you know, shaming they received, girls went and talked to them. Uh, the professors at school gave them a bad grade. Somebody on Reddit in their post. They think that that, uh, that them being celebrated, that the fact that their uh, vaunting was not returned, that they did not get the recognition or the applause they think they deserve, they believe that's worth killing for. You know, they had that slight that happened to them. They do become utterly obsessed with it, like we saw with the guy in uh, Virginia who shot up the two reporters. We're seeing that happen again. And uh, they just become invested in it. They decide to slink out of existence. You know, they stop hanging around with friends. They become withdrawn. And they just dwell on that day in, day out. And after a while, you know, eventually they decide, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start having fantasies. Fantasies about committing murder, about getting physical revenge. You know, because you look at media, they make it awesome. How many movies and television series are out there now, you know, that just go on? About how great revenge is, about how making other people pay. This really perverted form of uh, social justice going around inside their heads. And they become obsessed with that. Now, you look at this, you have the point where they're aggrieved. We're seeing the bad apps to them. That's an intervention point, so we can step in. You have the point where they become utterly obsessed. You can come in there and intervene, talk to them, and think about things differently. Uh, certainly, before they start to become invested in homicide fantasies, watching all these violent programs and vicarious fantasies, they keep from going on these websites, these forums that are dedicated to mass shootings, becoming this complete daydreaming about committing acts of deplorable crime. There's an intervention point there. Uh, to the point where they become withdrawn and isolated, become invested in fantasy. You can go in there, there's an intervention point there. The fact of the matter is, these mass shootings, there are plenty of opportunities to prevent these early on. I mean, this should not be looked at in the lens of it being a, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun argument, because that's complete and utter nonsense. You know, you don't treat cancer by waiting until you already have uh, the fur uncle on you. You actually go in there and you become preventative. You find out what causes the cancer, and then you work to keep them from being exposed to it. And the fact of the matter is, we don't care about that because that takes effort and you can't legislate it. This is not a political issue. It's not about mental health care access. It's not about guns. It's not about entertainment. It's probably about the media more than anything because that gives them the incentive to go out and do it. But the first part of it, it's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of having this absolutely bizarre, narcissistic, withdrawn, uh, socially alienated, completely, uh, you know, borderline introverted, mad self-worship, which causes people to go out there and kill. They think the world owes them something. They don't believe they're that great. It's a complete narcissistic serial killer attribute we're seeing transferred over, you know, to these guys who are running out, you know, like Virginia Tech and Aurora and uh, now up in Oregon. These guys running around doing this crap. And the thing is, that's a cultural thing. You know, we breed these people. We say it's okay for you to go out there and be utterly obsessed. 
uh, about your being aggrieved, then you know if someone does something wrong to you, you just become a victim. You, you become so withdrawn. And that infuriates you. That's all you can think about. We said that's all right. Go out and do it. Why not? You know, we don't have this thing where you teach something called resilience, where you bounce back, where you don't play the victim card, where you don't run around and say, oh, well, it's not my fault. It's always somebody else's fault. Therefore, I am totally in the right to go out and kill people. I mean, that's just utterly absurd. But like I said before, we can't politicize it. You can't solve it with legislation. This is just something that parents teach their children or they pick up in school or don't pick up in school and nobody's saying anything about it. But anyway, that's just what's happening. That's the tragedy here. This is gonna keep happening until we realize that, you know what? We can't rely upon government. We can't rely upon the police. We can't rely upon a dude carrying a concealed weapon license to do this. But the only people who can stop mass shootings in the future are us. It's up to us when we see these things going on early. When there is someone we know who is absolutely, utterly obsessed and captivated by some wrongdoing they believe happened to them, to step in there. When they become socially withdrawn and completely alienated and acting weird and completely just stepping outside of reality, that's when we're supposed to intervene. Uh, you know, when they're having homicide fantasies, they're going on to these forums, that's when we go in there and we intervene and we say something. Because, you know, you look at all these things going on, the absolute best deterrent for a mass shooter. Think about this. To go out and go out there and just kill people you don't know. To indiscriminately murder people. What kind of social alienation is that? How detached from your own humanity do you have to be for that to happen? And that's why, if you go back and you read Elliot Rogers' manifesto, the guy in the out in California last year, the, the men's right supposed to kill her. You know, you read his book and it's just absolute page after page of loneliness. It's a guy who had no real friends, who had no real social bonds, whose only sort of uh, interaction with the world was through the internet. Folks, it's our obligation, it's our duty to reach out to these people. If someone you know is displaying these symptoms, if someone is going out there and collecting guns and going on these forums and talking about getting revenge and he's utterly obsessed with uh, this perceived injustice, do something about it. Talk to them. Talk to their parents. You know, tell a counselor. If it's bad enough, call the police on them. Do something. Because that's the only way we're going to stop mass shootings. We don't wait till people are already dead. We don't wait until the coroner's already on the scene. You start early. You start often, and maybe, just maybe, we can make some headway on this problem. But until then, we got more deaths coming, and there's nothing we can do to prevent them.